Hello everyone and welcome back to Biology with Mrs. Evans. We have finished our unit on the cell membrane and membrane transport and now we are starting our unit on cells. To begin our discussion we're going to look at the different scientists and the works that they did to increase our knowledge about cells and we're going to start with Anton von Leeuwenhoek. He was a cloth merchant. Um, I don't really care that you know that, but I do care that you know that he created the single lens microscope, and he did that so that he could look at um, the threads that he'd be using in his uh, business. And he is credited with the first scientist to look at living cells under the microscope. He is also referred to as the father of uh, microbiology because he spent a lot of time looking at um, different materials underneath the microscope and it's because of his works that we have a lot of information and uh, his drawings that basically sparked an interest in um, things that we couldn't see with our naked eye. So here's a picture of uh, the single lens microscope. You would put a specimen and be able to look through uh, the single lens just like a magnifying glass basically. So again know that he created the single lens microscope and he is known as the father of microbiology because he was the first to look at living organisms and then he did extensive work uh, and kept detailed records. He felt it was his obligation to keep a record for scientists that would come after him. Robert Hooke, he is um, by some credited with the uh, compound light microscope, or sorry, compound microscope uh, invention, but he did not invent it. He basically uh, improved upon it. And what you see here on the screen is a copy of, or a picture of, his microscope that he created. And he is also credited with um, terming the, um, coining the term cells. As you can see in the picture here, this is a drawing that he did when he looked at cork underneath of his microscope. And he called it cells because if you look at this, this looks like rooms and then you have hallways. So these were, to him, it looked like the rooms that you would see in a monastery. The next scientist that we're going to talk about is uh, Matthias Schladen. He was a botanist and he spent his time studying plants. He looked at all kinds of plant cells underneath a microscope. And because of his work um, in 1838, he basically concluded that all cells, um, all plants, sorry, all plants were made of cells. And then uh, another scientist, Theodore Schwann, he basically did two contributions for what we know about cells. He was um, a uh, cytologist, which means he basically studied cells, and he primarily studied animal cells. And as a result of his extensive studies of looking at different types of animal cells underneath the microscope, he concluded that all animals are made up of cells. And he also is known as the stain master because he came up with or he, uh, different stains that you could use to stain the different structures um, so that you could see them more clearly when you looked at them underneath the microscope. An easy way to remember uh, Schwann for animals is to me, if I look at his name, I think of a swan. So Schwann studied animal cells. And then the last one that we're going to talk about is Rudolf uh, Virchow. He, um, a lot of people call him a thief uh, because they believe that he stole the idea from another scientist, Robert uh, Remick. Some people say he didn't steal it. Uh, it was just the timing of basically his uh, publication of his ideas. But we're going to say that he didn't uh, steal it, that he came up with the idea that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So it is, it is the work of these three scientists, Schladen, Schwann, and Virchow, as to um, how we came up with what is known as the cell theory. And cell theory you should have learned in middle school so hopefully this is not going to be a uh, new area for you just be a quick review so the first thing is is that all living things um, are made up of cells they can be either unicellular which means they are made up of one cell or they can be multicellular which means they are made up of many cells so all living things are made up of cells and then the second part of that is that cells are the basic unit of structure and function. And what that means is, is that cells have uh, little organelles in them that carry out specific functions. And we're going to talk about organelles and the jobs that they play uh, later in uh, videos to come. 
And then the last part of the cell theory is that cells come from pre-existing cells. So it's because of the compound microscope that we gained a knowledge about cells. And uh, with the invention of the electron microscope, we uh, scientists basically added to the cell theory to add things like uh, the cell has DNA and that it's located in the nucleus and that it has a metabolism. And it's because of the electron microscope, uh, basically, that we gained that knowledge. So things that you can see, um, obviously, with uh, without the help of any type of microscope, the chicken egg um, that you guys probably, well, you've seen in the lab videos that we've done, is the largest cell um, and you can see that, obviously, with your naked eye. You don't need a microscope to see that. But when you start getting down into um, bacterial cells, bacterial cells range from anywhere from 1 to 5 micrometers. Uh, the smallest, as you see on uh, the screen, can be even less than 1 micrometer. And then for most eukaryotes, uh, eukaryotic cells, and those are uh, cells that have a nucleus, range from 10 to 100 micrometers. So with the invention of compound microscope, we were able to see things that were um, too small to see with our naked eye. And then with the electron microscope, we could see things even smaller, as you can see here, uh, viruses, ribosomes, proteins, lipids, all of those uh, were made visible basically with the invention of the electron microscope. So, so far we've talked about two microscopes. One is uh, Laban Hooke's uh, single lens microscope, and then the other one is the compound microscope. Today, we have what we call a compound light microscope. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because you will see a video specifically on the compound microscope. So just know si single lens microscope was Laban Hook, and then Robert Hooke basically modified uh, the compound microscope to be uh, what it is that we use today. So, two types of microscopes. Um, we have the compound light microscope, which is what you will use in biology classes, both in high school and in college. Uh, the benefits of using those is that it is um, non-harmful, usually, to specimens when we are looking at them. Um, typically, uh, there's no um, loss of life unless you keep them on the slide too long and the light basically cooks them. Um, the con to it is that it has smaller magnification and less detail than you would get with the um, electron microscope. Electron microscope, you need to know that there are two types. One is the scanning electron microscope, abbreviated as you see on the screen, and that basically creates a 3D uh, image of what you're looking at underneath the microscope. And then the other one is the transmission uh, electron microscope, and that produces a 2D image, and it doesn't have as much detail as the scanning um, electron microscope. So the con to that is that uh, living things don't survive the viewing because you are shooting them basically with a beam of electrons and and because of that it needs to be placed in a vacuum so the organisms do not survive um, the viewing. The pro to that is it has very high magnification so we can see things very very small as you saw in the screen um, previously. So we were able to see things like the mitochondria, ribosomes um, that we weren't able to see clearly with the uh, compound microscope. And this is a picture of the um, electron microscope. So you can see it is a uh, pretty big microscope and it's going to shoot a beam of electrons through what you are looking at. And this is a copy of what you would see under a scanning electron microscope. Pollen, if you've ever gone outside and you saw that yellow dust on your car, if you were to look at that underneath a scanning electron microscope, this is what it looks like. So you can see it picks up all of these details, the little spikes on these. This looks like a little boomerang almost. Um, so a lot more detail than it would look like to us. Um, to us it looks like just little specks of uh, dust on uh, our windshield. And then because of the modern uh, uh, electron microscope we added to the modern cell theory and that is that uh, cells have metabolism and we know that the mitochondria is uh, and you should have learned that in middle school as the powerhouse of the cell. This is where cells are going to convert the food, basically the food that we eat into usable energy which we're going to talk about later uh, in this unit. And then obviously that cells 
contain DNA. So the um, electron microscope allowed us to basically see those structures and we've added to uh, the modern cell theory. So things that you need to know from this, uh, be able to know uh, the scientists and what contributions they uh, basically gave to the development of the cell theory. So um, Robert Hooke and Laban Hooke, their inventions of the single lens microscope and the compound light microscope um, sparked an interest in seeing things that we couldn't see with our naked eye. And then Schladen studied plants, and because of his work, we know that all plants are made up of cells. Um, Schwann, he did two things. One is he created stains um, and also came up with staining techniques to be able to see structures that we couldn't see without using stains. And also that he studied animal cells and he concluded that all animals are made up of cells. And then Virchow, you need to know that he came up with the idea that all cells came from pre-existing cells. So this is what you need to know for cell theory. We will look at uh, cells later in uh, different videos and you will also look at the compound microscope um, in another view video to come. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.